Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where I'm going to be giving you a few quick tips and techniques on how you can draw your own very yellow fluffy chick like the one that I've drawn here. So if you're ready to learn some techniques and everything for drawing this then carry on watching. So one of the first things I've done is obviously got my outline. I have outlined this using my iPad and then just kind of use Procreate to add the outline over the top. I did this because it's an easy way for me to give line arts to my students because this is a tutorial that is available to students and I've actually found that it's a really incredibly useful way to produce outlines really quickly so I'm going to bring a video to you guys on that soon but if you want to create your own outline you generally I use the grid method I'm going to leave a link in the description for the video on how I actually do that for you guys the eye for this little guy was really simple I just used my darkest color which was dark sepia I've just gently outlined the very kind of shape of it made sure the shape was right added in a really hard pressure using my Holbein white pencil to the highlight and then just filled in the rest of the eye with very soft layers of the dark sepia and then just gently shaded the highlight of the eye with a little bit of sky blue as well. So the main feature of this tutorial is obviously all of that lovely soft fluffy looking yellow I don't know whether it's like fluff or feather or fur but we're just going to go with fluff because it's the most easiest way to describe this so it's just super fluffy it looks really really kind of like you could sink your your fingertips into it and yeah it's just really nice to create this but first of all we're going to just work on the beak a little bit so the beak had tones of pink, orange and yellow and I've put down initially a little bit of light flesh and I've used that really lightly and blended it with a white pencil to get a nice light pink base. I've then gone into the kind of base of the beak where it attaches to the face with some more orange tone pencils so I have used some dark chrome yellow, some cadmium orange, all of that kind of stuff. The top half of the beak is a lot lighter than the lower half of the beak so on the lower half of the beak I've gone in with a few more of those dark oranges, co orange colours like terracotta and I've just made sure that I've blended them all through using some lighter coloured pencil, mainly used my ivory toned pencil to do a lot of the blending with this particular beak here. I've added in some of the features like the nostril and the partition of the beak as well just using a really sharp pencil. I've used my terracotta pencil so the darkest kind of earthy toned orange that I had here and just made sure all the values are right within the beak there so making sure you've got that really light tip and then the underneath is a lot darker than the top of the beak there. So then we come to the fluffy down of the chick. So this is just built up using some really soft layers. There are minimal layers that are actually going into this and it's really really simple to actually build up. There are a few areas where I've actually used a little bit of colour theory and adding in additional colours to build in some interesting tone and some light lighting techniques. But the first thing that I'm going in with is a base of ivory, which is my lightest pencil. I'm using ivory here because I want the yellows to be nice and bright and nice and rich. If you go in with something like a, a grey base, it's going to really dull those colours and you're not going to get those yellows to really pop. And it's just going to look a lot more grey in tone rather than that nice bright yellow. So then I've added in some lighter yellows, so I've gone in with some cream and then some cadmium yellow, all of those colours and just slowly built up to some of my darker colours. When I am working with all of these different yellows I am always making sure that I use a really light pressure on my pencil because it's really hard and difficult to kind of build some yellows that look natural. You can go in with a bit of a harder pressure and you can build a really strong yellow colour but it's going to look unnatural and it's not going to kind of suit the subject in this case. You can go in with a harder pressure on something that is like um, a metal texture or something, uh, something that maybe is a little bit more unnatural but if you're going for wildlife and using yellows you want to use them lightly because otherwise you're going to get too much saturation and it's just going to look a little bit strange. I've also combined those kind of brighter yellows like the cadmium yellow and the cream with a bit more of a natural toned yellow like the Naples yellow and I've also paired this with my light flesh so I've done in a few tutorials now uh, kind of where I use an ivory and then I go in with a pink pencil 
and you may notice that it creates like this really lovely peach color and that's what I've done here because on the back of the chick you've got these really lovely peachy orangey tones or on the front of the chick you've got a bit more of the uh, gray tones like it. and I've added in a bit more blue which I'll get to in a minute as well but that's where the light is hitting the bird like from the kind of breast of the bird and then you've got the back of the bird which is kind of in a little bit more shadow so I've added in more of those peachy tones as I said, I'm just making sure that I really gently build up the layers. I don't want to go in with a heavy pressure and get that unnatural yellow look. So really soft, gentle layers, and you want to work in the direction that the kind of fluff is going. In this case, on the back, it's kind of flowing in a curve around the back and down towards the feet. You get to the wing area and you've got a little bit of a change in direction. So that's where your base layers are really going to come into play here because you can use your initial base of that ivory or your lightest tone and you can plot out which direction your fur or your feathers or in this case the fluff is going. So I just use my initial light colour to plot that out. Using a light colour to do this is also really uh, good because then if you make a mistake it's in a light colour and not in a darker colour so it's not like you're adding in your your darkest tones and then you've realised you've gone in a completely the wrong direction so using a lighter colour to help to plot this out is really beneficial for that reason that you can adjust it and it's not going to make too much difference because it's a really light colour and it's not going to show too much on the, fur the further layers and the finished piece. So you may have noticed that I have used a few kind of weird, unnatural looking colours in this chick. So my colour palette for this was mainly built up with yellows and that uh, that light flesh, so that pink tone to build that peachy colour on the back. But I needed some tones to add some depth and some light to the fluff. And that's where I have added in a few greens and also some blue. So adding in blues and greens alongside the yellows creates a kind of harmonious colour palette because then you've got yellow, green and then through to blue. So they kind of all interlink with each other and will work really nicely with each other. But also when you're adding the blues and the oranges together they kind of create a, a kind of grey tone which is perfect for some shadows and I've also added the really light blue onto the edges of the bird because when you're adding blue onto white or a light surface which in this case would be the ivory you create the illusion of light so it looks like the light is really hitting the bird and those bits are the brightest so I find if you followed my white fur tutorial at all at any point or any kind of white subject that I've done I always add some blue and I always always usually add in some purple as well because those colours really accentuate the brightness of those lighter tones. So in this portrait although we do have a kind of harmonious colour palette with the yellow greens and the blues we also have some contrasting colours because I'm using blues and greens with oranges which as I said contrast with each other and you can create a nice um, kind of grey tone and they can also help to accentuate one another not one another when they are placed next to each other as well for this portrait I didn't really use too much of a, like a dark grey or brown to darken like the shadows in the wings and around the beak and everything that is mainly done by adding in some green and some blue I've gone over and added in some burnt umber which was my darkest pencil in terms of um, like adding in the fluff and everything I didn't use my dark sepia to darken any of the fluff or the feet or anything in this so just use that burnt umber I use that more towards the bottom because it is really dark because the chick is actually sitting on top of some grass so I used the burnt umber on the bottom to just help darken but all of the other shadows and all of the kind of accentuated features that you can see sort of the darker shadow around the neck a uh, little bit around the eye and through the wing are mainly added in just by using the yellows some of the darker oranges and then going in with some blues and some greens to help to create a little bit more of a shadow. So the main thing throughout this portrait, as I said, was just to make sure to keep the layers really nice and light, keep the pressure on your pencil really soft, and very slowly build up those yellow tones and those orange tones and those shadows. So this was a really short tutorial for me to complete. It actually only took me two hours to complete this, including the grass. The grass was actually a quite a big chunk. It took up about a quarter of the tutorial and then the other other half or three quarters was filled up with the chick. Um, but this was just a really super quick tutorial and as I said there's not many layers and they are built up quite slowly in a fashion um, but 
because there's not so many layers it doesn't involve too like and it's not like you're building up black fur or anything which in includes a lot of different colors and a lot of different layering and relayering with lighter stuff like this i find it really quick and simple because you don't need to add that many colors to get the effect that you're after which was perfect for me and if you are after a shorter tutorial maybe you don't have the attention span for a longer one or you just want to see some really fast quick results I would definitely recommend checking this out on my Club Puffin tier on Patreon and also it's available on my Club Puffin website as well. As I said, it's really quick and easy. I love this one and you get some super quick results. There's learning about colour theory, as I've explained in this short tutorial. You're learning how to apply your coloured pencils and you're also learning how to um, create different shadows and also some different colours. So you've got that kind of peachy tone got the bit a few more stronger kind of yellow tones as well and it's just a really nice texture to work on as well especially if you are new to animal portraits this is a pretty basic technique and application of this particular kind of texture so yeah that's available over on my as I said club puffin tier on patreon and on my club puffin website if you're interested in learning there's also a whole host of other tutorials as well available on both platforms so have a look over there if you're interested in learning more about colored pencils and about the things that i've explained in this short tutorial and uh, we'll hopefully you will find something that you may enjoy or will kind of in pique your interest well that's pretty much it for the short tutorial um yeah i just wanted to draw this chick because it really kind of piqued my interest and i wanted to draw something for the spring equinox because i'm feeling really kind of rejuvenated and springful at the moment there's lots of bees and butterflies about and i just wanted to create something that was the epitome of spring for me that was this chick it's also if you celebrate easter or into that or anything it's kind of to do with that as well or if you're into any kind of like you know spring kind of vibes that's what i wanted to bring with this guy and i think i was quite successful in bringing that so i really hope that you've enjoyed this short tutorial and i will see you guys in the next one bye